Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, we actually, we have a lot of people attending our webinar today, um, more than our capacity allows for. So we're going to host a second webinar, um, and we'll announce that, we'll send that out later this afternoon, the date and time for that. And we'll also be posting this webinar recording for later viewing for those of you who um, were able to, to sign in. Uh, so it's great that we have so many people listening today. Uh, my name is Brittany Malley, and I'm a registered dietitian and program officer with the Nevada Department of Agriculture. And today's webinar is on the Nevada School Wellness Implementation Reporting Tool and how it's going to work for year two. Okay, so today's agenda is we're going to talk about why we have this tool, how does it work, who is required to complete what sections, and what are the due dates for entering this information. So really briefly, uh, we have this tool uh, because of the H Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act that came about in 2010. Um, it put forth um, some stricter requirements for the school wellness policies, which all the districts uh, have been revising and coming up with their final policies this last year. And then in 2014, the local school wellness policy interim rule put forth reporting requirements, which is how this tool came about. Uh, so annually, what information we're trying to obtain um, by having this reporting tool is the website address where each uh, school policy can be accessed, and then a description of each school's progress in meeting the goals that they have set for that year, and then also a summary of each school's events or activities that are related to achieving those goals and related to wellness policy implementation. Um, we also ask for the, the information for the school wellness policy coordinator for that to be updated and then information on how individuals and the public can get involved with the school wellness policy teams. And then this year we've added a set of questions that help assess whether schools are following the wellness policy. Uh, so how this tool works is in um, the Nevada Department of Agriculture created this online tool. Hmm. Okay, hold on a second. We're trying to figure out. Um, some people the can't hear. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, so I'm starting over really quick. Sorry. Okay, so sorry about that. Um, people said they could see the slides changing but couldn't hear us talking. So I'm going to start from the beginning. And just really quick, we reach capacity for how many attendees we can have. So we're going to hold a second webinar for the same information, same presentation at a later date and time. And we're going to send out when that's going to be later this afternoon. We're also um, we will be posting this webinar recording for later viewing online as well. So um, thank you for joining us today. We have a lot of people attending, which is great. My name is Brittany Malley, and I am a registered dietitian and program officer for the Nevada Department of Agriculture. And today's presentation is about Nevada's school wellness implementation reporting tool and how it's going to be used for year two. Okay, so today's agenda, we're going to talk about why we have this tool, how this tool works, 
who is required to complete what sections, and what are the due dates for entering this information. So really briefly, we have this tool because in 2010, the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act was established, which asked for some different requirements in the school wellness policies. And then in 2014, the local school wellness policy interim rule put forth reporting requirements, which is where this online tool comes in. It's to capture that, that this information. So information that we're trying to capture every year on this online tool is the website address for each school wellness policy and where that can be accessed by the public um, if people want a copy of it. And then a description of each school's progress in meeting the local wellness policy goals that they set. And then a summary of each school's events or activities that have been held and are helping to reach these goals and to help implement school wellness policy. We also ask for the name, position title, and contact information for the school wellness policy coordinator. And then information on how individuals and the public can get involved with the school wellness policy team if they wish to do so. And then this year, uh, we have added in a set of questions that help assess whether schools are following the wellness policy. So the Nevada Department of Agriculture created this online reporting system last year and implemented it. So this is year two. And all school food authorities were asked to designate a point of contact. And how it, how it worked last year and how it's going to work this year is the point of contact is going to receive an email that will um, prompt them to log in for the first time. So this year the email is going to come from the food, it comes from Food and Nutrition Division. And it has the link to log in and then it prompts you to change your password. So you'll be, be receiving those um, later today or tomorrow because I have to go in and enter all the point of contacts to start with. And once the point of contacts go in um, and log in, they can input the district level data to start with. And then new this year, the district level users are going to be responsible for managing the school level users and getting them set up in the system. Once the district level data has been entered and submitted, then the schools can go in and enter their information. But only the schools can only go in once the districts have submitted their data. So this is the website address for the reporting tool, and that will be sent to you in an email. And this is what the reporting tool looks like on the, the front page. Uh, there is the login button up here on the top right hand corner. So you'll click there to log in. And then that brings you to this page. So you'll enter your email information and your, your email address and then your password to start with, and then you'll click login. And that brings you to this page. So this is a home page, and up here on the right hand side, um, the right the right top corner, it has your email, it'll have your email address. You can click on that to go in and change your password at any time. So if you click on it, it would bring you to a page like this, and you can change your password. OK, so going back to the home page, this is where you'll access your dashboard. So the dashboard button is up here on the, the left top corner. So you're going to click on that. And this is as a sponsor um, user right now. So all these screenshots and these steps are for people that are district level users that are going in to enter their goals. So this is the, what the dashboard will look like for a district user. Uh, I was in as a Clark County to test this out. So it'll say who you're, um, what county you're in as. And then the first thing you want to check is this box right here that has the year in it. You want to make sure that it's reading your the current school year. So it's reading 2015-16, which is the school year we're in right now. And 
um, you want to make sure that you hit that purple update button to make sure it updates to that year. Okay. So since we're as as district level users, you're going to go in and enter goals for this upcoming school year. So you're entering information for 2016-17. This is at the district user level. We'll talk about the school level level user in a minute. So to start entering goals, under where it says district goals, you want to hit create. And that'll take you to this page where you can start entering the information. So it's going to ask you to enter uh, the three goals one under nutrition, education, and promotion, one under physical activity, and the third one under other school wellness activities. And um, hopefully some of you got to listen to the SMART Goals webinar that we held about a month ago uh, that talked about writing SMART Goals for your wellness policy. So this is where you would enter your SMART Goals that you've made, and then also where you will enter the web address for the school wellness policy, and then the contact information for the um, wellness coordinator. So once you have all that information entered, you can hit the create button down at the bottom, and that will bring up a page that looks like this. So on this page it has your name, I'm in as Clark County, so that's what it's showing, it has the school year. You can click on this View Policy uh, link and that'll take you to the, the website where you said the school wellness policy is located. And then under Status it says Open. That's because we haven't submitted anything yet. And then under Action, there's the Edit button. So you're going to want to click on the Edit button right now. And that'll bring you back to the page where you entered all your, all your information except at the bottom instead of the create button there's a save and a submit button if you're done entering your information and you are finished um, you can click the submit button however if you're not finished you can click the save button and come back and work on it later okay so only if you're finished click the submit button because once you submit this information you can't go back in and edit it um, you'd have to call me, email me, and I can unlock it, and then you can go back and edit it, but you won't be able to freely go in and edit anything if you submit it. So it, so it shows that you've submitted your goals in two different areas. The first one is it brings you back to a page that looks like this. However, now under status, instead of open, it says submitted. Okay, and if you notice under the action, area there's no longer there's no longer an edit button to click on to go back and edit your goals you can view them if you want you just can't go back and, and edit anything now and then if you go back to your dashboard um, your dashboard now under district goals it'll say submitted instead of create okay so that shows you there as well that you've submitted some some goals and like I mentioned, sponsors and at the district level must submit their goals and information before the schools can go in and enter their information. Okay, and you have to submit it. You can't just save it. If it's open, um, the school user still can't go in. Okay, you want to make sure you submit it. And then also, uh, like I said, once submitted, the sponsor must contact myself at the Department of Agriculture to go in and unlock it so you can go back and edit something. And we'll talk about the goals and information populating onto the school level uh, form in a moment. So something that is different this year than last year is that the district level users are going to be responsible for managing and setting up their school level users. And how you do this is on the right hand side of the page, there's a manage users area. And how this will work is, since you're all going in as new um, new users for this year, you're just going to click the Add button to start with. But I want to point out that after you've gone in and added your users and you want to go in and change something later, you can just type in the last name of the user and then click Search, and it'll bring it up. Um, but for right now, um, since it'll be new, you want to click the Add button. And that'll bring you to this page. 
So you're just going to enter information um, about the user, their name, title, phone number, and then under the security section, this is where you choose the system role for this user. There's district user or school user. Most likely you're going to want to make sure they're all a school user since they're managing schools and going to be entering the information about their school. Um, the district user, they are able to enter goals and manage users. That's the only difference. So if you want them to have that ability, you can, uh, but most of these people um, that you're putting in, you're going to want to make sure they're the school user. So under the login and password section, you want to make sure you click this little box right here that says send account password set up to user because this is going to generate an email from the food and nutrition division uh, for them to log in the first time and set up their password. Okay, if you don't have this, this box clicked, they won't get that generated email and then they won't be able to go and log in. So make sure that box is clicked and then enter in their email in this box. And then you can click create. And now the section that pops up at the bottom is about the schools. And this is where you can choose what schools you want your this user to manage. So they can manage just one school or multiple schools. If they're going to manage multiple schools, you just have to add, a, add each school one at a time. So how you add a school is you click on this drop down arrow and a list of all the schools in your district will, will pop up. So you want to choose the school that you want them to manage. You'll click on it and then click add. And then the school will show up on this side of the page under schools managing. Okay. And then if you want them to manage another school, same process, click the drop down button. This list of schools will pop up. Choose the school you want and click add. And you always have the option to remove the users from a school if you want. There's a remove button over here as well. Okay, so now we're moving on to the um, school level user section of the online tool. So this is the login page. Um, like I said, it looks the same as the sponsor's login page. I think last year there was a little different process for school users to go and log in. They needed a school code and the district code to be able to log in. That's no, that's no longer necessary. As long as they get an email from Food and Nutrition Division with the login information and setup, um, they'll be able to log in. Oops. Okay. So same home page as well. You'll want to click on the dashboard to get started. And the dashboard for the school user looks a little different. There's not as much information and not as many options. Um, but the first thing that the school, user, the school level user is going to want to check is the school year, just like on the sponsor page. So you want to make sure you're in the correct school year. So for this year, it's 2015 and 16. Make sure you always click the purple update button just to make sure it's it's linked to, to that school year. And as I mentioned with the district users, they're entering information for this upcoming school year. So the goals that they're entering, all that information is going to be for school year 16-17. Now the schools that are going in to enter their information, they're reporting progress on what's been going on this school year and the goals that were set this last year. Okay, so they're entering information um, in the present and the past, whereas the district users are entering information for the future. Okay, so I don't want the school year to get, um, to have people confused. Okay, we're in this school year, 2015-16. Um, so to start entering information, um, you want to click under the View Edit button under the Schools, and this page will come up. So the district user assigned schools to um, each school user to manage, and this is where they'll sh this is where they will show up. So for this one that I did, um, I'm managing one school, and under Action it says New because I haven't gone in and entered any information. So to start entering information, you want to click on New, 
and that'll bring you to the question, th this page, where we're going to start entering information. So if you notice here at the top, there's three different tabs. There's goals, policy, and questions. You're going to enter information under each tab. To start with is goals. That's what comes up first. And what's going to happen is where it says district goal, under goal one, um, if your district user went in last year and put in their goals, entered that information, that goal will automatically populate um, in this field right here. Okay, so if your uh, sponsor and district user did not go in and enter goals, there won't be a goal up there. And I'm just going to warn you, there was 76% of districts that went in and, and entered goals, so there will be some schools where a, a goal won't show up, okay? And that's probably because there wasn't one entered. And if you're a school site that had your own goals for, for the school year and that's not showing up, you can type that in this box down here that says explain and notes. Please put in your goal there and talk about um, if you met it and that kind of, or if you didn't meet it. Okay, that's what we're doing for right now because it should just be the district level goals that are auto-populating in these sections. So you'll go through the goal section and answer these questions. And then when you're done with the goal section, you can click on the policy tab at the top and that'll bring you to the policy page. And on the policy page, it's asking you questions about the dates, times, and locations of the wellness policy meetings that were held and um, other things about these meetings and on some more contact information if people want to get involved in the school wellness team. So once you're done with the policy section, you can click on the questions tab at the top and that brings you to the last section on this page. So these are the set of questions I talked about that are assessing whether the school wellness policy is being implemented, implemented at the schools. So there's 10 questions in total. Uh, some of them have two parts. They're all multiple choice. Um, so just choose the best answer. And if you want to go in and take a look at these beforehand, if you're not sure um, what the answers are, you can always go in and look and, and save the document. You don't have to submit it right away. So you're going to go through and answer all of these questions. And then um, on the bottom of the last page of the questions, there's a save button. There's also a save button at the bottom of the policy page and the goals page as well. You don't have to click save on, on all of them. Um, just one should save it. Um, but there's a save button at the bottom. So when you're done answering the questions, you want to click the save button. And then it'll show you, um, it'll bring you to this page. Um, back to the one that has the three tabs at the top, but now there's a fourth tab that says submit. Okay, so you can still go in right now, enter um, enter more information, edit anything you, you put in, but when you're ready to submit, click on that submit tab, and now there's, in that tab, there's a submit button and there's a save button. So if you're not finished, click save, but if you are done and you want to submit your information, you can click the submit button. Okay, um, and I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but I did put together a user's manual for this um, reporting tool. So along with all the screenshots that we went over today, there's written information and written and the steps are written out on what you're supposed to do, what information we need, that sort of thing. So I'm going to be emailing. <clears throat> I'm going to be emailing that user guide out after the webinar today, um, so you all have that, and you can share it with anybody else that's going to be entering information. What we're asking as far as due dates go are that all schools complete their reporting by June 1st this year, which means that it'd be beneficial for the district level users to go to go in now and as soon as possible to start entering their information so that then the and, and set up the school level users so that they can um, start entering their information and gathering the data that they need um, to do that. And then something that we're doing this year with this tool is um, producing progress reports uh, that 
can be available online for the public to view because we really want to highlight your guys' successes and um, you know, show that schools and districts are working towards implementing their school wellness policies. So we want to show that you guys, what you guys are doing and that this is happening. So June 6 is our target date for reports to be available. Um, and that's just going to, the reports are going to draw on the information that you guys are inputting in the next few months. Okay, so like I said, um, I'm going to send out the user guide later today uh, for, for this online tool. Um, and then if you guys have any questions while you're um, going through the user guide, you see something that doesn't make sense, um, please email me, call me, let me know, um, because you're probably not the only one with that question or that concern. And I'm more than happy to, to help anybody um, through any, any part of this process. So um, that's the end of my presentation on the webinar. Uh, we have been getting some questions. So um, if you have more questions, go ahead and type them into the box, and I'm going to start answering some of the ones that we've had so far. Um, so somebody said their previous login info isn't working. Uh, that's because I have to go in and set you up, and it's going to generate a, an email from Food and Nutrition Division. So you'll get that, and that has a login um, link in that email. So you'll click on the login link and then enter your your new password. So your information, your login info from last year is not going to work right now. You have to wait to get an email from us. And I'm going to do that today, today and tomorrow morning. Let's see. Um, will the school users that were set up last year still work? Um, I think it's the same concept. Um, as what I was just talking about, um, you're going to have to get a, they, they sh I'm pretty sure they're not going to work. You can go ahead and try, but since the login is different this year, we're not using the school codes and the district level codes. Um, they're, the school levels are going to, are going to have to wait to get an email um, from Food and Nutrition Division. And that is when, um, the district level user has to go in and set up set up their users. Okay, somebody asked, are there examples of SMART goals that we could view? So the webinar that I did last month on the SMART goals, it's up on our YouTube channel, and you can access that and watch that webinar. Um, and there are some examples of SMART goals in that webinar related to uh, the school wellness policy. And if you have more questions about uh, SMART goals, you can always um, email me, call me, um, especially I can, I can go over the ones that, that you have set right now if you want me to check and see if they're SMART, that type of thing. Can the district user and the school site user be one and the same person? Yes. It can. Um, so try that. I think you can make yourself, you should be able to manage your own. If you're the district level user, you're the one managing users. Um, you can go in and and click that box that says school, school level user um, under manage users. Okay, another question. If the school sites are inputting information all year long, then they would not want to hit submit until the very end of the school year. Is this correct? Yes, um, but a lot of the questions are not ongoing questions. They're kind of, um, they're more like cumulative. Okay, hold on one second. Katrina's gonna take over and answer some of these questions. Hi everybody. Um, first, I just wanted to clarify, we're getting quite a few questions around who the district level user is and who the site level users are. So if you're in a large district, and I think a lot of the folks on the webinar are from Clark, uh, there's a district level coordinator and that's Shannon Lene. And uh, once we input in all the information into the system, the district level coordinator will be able to administer who the person is at the site level. So if you're a wellness coordinator at a site level, you're going to want to communicate with your district level coordinator to be able to um, communicate with them around gaining access to the system and the timeline to enter in information.
So again, if you're in a large district, you're going to want to contact your district level coordinator and have a conversation with them around uh, getting access to be able to input your site level information. Um, our YouTube channel, we'll go ahead and send out the link to the, the webinar once it's posted and we'll send that to everybody who has signed up for the webinar. So even folks who weren't able to join will be able to access that. You can also um, look for, search for Nevada Agriculture on the YouTube site and it'll pull up, um, pull up our account. So someone asked, I'm an assistant principal at a school in Clark County, so you're waiting for the district level user to input goals, correct? Yes, that is correct. So you'll want to connect with Shannon. She'll be able to give you access. So you can enter information about uh, your particular school site. We will also be sending out the link to our PowerPoint presentation when we send out the link to the webinar. Those are posted on our SlideShare account so that folks can access those. Um, I think that kind of wraps up a lot of the questions and again I really appreciate everyone's interest in this topic um, just like Brittany said we're really excited to get some information into the system so that we can help celebrate the successes our districts have had in developing a district wellness policy and getting that implemented so I uh, really appreciate everyone's time today and once we get this posted we'll be sending out information to everyone who's registered if you have questions you can always uh, contact Brittany directly she's our, our specialist here who works on school wellness. Um, thank you, everybody.